Today we are on the launch of the Xpeng P7i, a very heavily facelifted version of the original P7. As I said in the original P7 review, this car did a lot of things right very early on. You have to remember this car originally was designed in 2019. Four years in the pure battery electric vehicle sector is more like a decade for the petrol powered cars. So now for 2023, it has gone through a very thorough facelift. Under the scheme, just about everything has been changed. We're gonna go through that today. It has new motors, new dampers, and most importantly, the already very advanced autonomous driving system on the original P7 has been heavily updated for 2023. Look here, it's got LiDAR on either side of the nose to help with distance detection, which isn't that easy to do with pure cameras. Plus a small design fix. The original P7's rear light only stops at roughly here. It feels like they almost forgot this shut line exists. So for the facelifted P7, they extend this a little bit further. Overall, just this looks like a more integrated design. Now on the interior, there are small changes everywhere. We have the steering wheel straight from the G9, which I heavily criticized in the G9 review. If you haven't watched it, click the link in the top right hand corner of the screen to have a look. But here in the P7, it feels fine and it looks fine because the p7 is competing with cars like tesla model 3 it also has a much lower starting price of 36,000 us dollar this steering wheel is totally fine for 36,000. just don't put it into a car with 50,000 dollar price tag there are new trim materials on the doors and you have a new storage compartment underneath the central tunnel you have dual wireless charging pad and you have a storage compartment now can open from either side. And I just noticed in here is almost a jewelry like fragrance system. You can feel this car has, they have gone through the details on this car. Here in the back, it's the same old story. I'm five foot 11, the driver's seat is set to my position, but I'm someone who like to sit very tight. So treat this as sort of a best case scenario. The space is a bit limited. It may be a tiny bit better than the Tesla Model 3, but that's nothing to write home about. And this floor hump is still here. So practicality wise, it's not class leading. Let's put it that way. Why we're on this event today is because I want to try out this city navigate on pilot system. And you hear that correct? It's city. We're not on a highway today. And that's because the major update of this P7 is its autonomous driving system. But the max version we are on here today has two of those chips. And plus it has the LiDAR that we've showed you earlier. It can navigate itself through busy urban streets automatically. I wouldn't say this is already as capable as a real really experienced human driver but the best way to just describe its capability is it's a very capable intern you need to have a glass half full kind of attitude towards this kind of system because it is not as efficient as a very experienced human driver however if you have low expectation like i have be before today i'm pleasantly surprised with this prioritizes safety it's kind of conservative like if you're crossing a fake junction where either side of the road is closed this car will still slow down um, from 60 kph down to about 40 to minimize risk and from a system design point of view i get what they're trying to do and may i just remind you that tesla's fsd beta is not available in china you can buy it it just doesn't have this kind of capability to drive itself in urban conditions and Tesla's F FSD beta now is very much the same situation as it entered China in 2019 with zero updates so if you want a car that can kind of drive itself in urban conditions this is just about the only car you can buy there is another one powered by Huawei uh, called the Avatar but that is very much a new brand we are about to make a right hand turn let's see how this system copes look at this how detailed this bird's eye view network is and that's a bigger point I want to get across is not only is this system a massive step forward in terms of hardware capability I believe we have a biker right here uh, it stopped okay we are still making this right hand turn this is kind of amazing i mean i consider myself 
I consider myself to have to be reasonably experienced in time in terms of this autonomous driving systems. There's a traffic light in front with five, four, three, two, one. It recognizes it decreases speed and it indicates red light on the system and it's pulling the car to a stop. So you see, in terms of capabilities, it is it has all the tricks. Um, just in terms of integration, um, it still has some way to go. And in terms of efficiency, there are room for improvement, but I'm, this is beyond my expectation for first try. I've mentioned this system is a big step forward in terms of hardware capabilities, but however, I need to emphasize the even bigger step is made in the software because this system now is very much on the same page with the Tesla FSD beta. That is, it, use, it reconstructs all of the data, whether it's from the cameras or from the radar or from the LiDAR, combine all of them together to build this digital view of the world, so-called a BEV, network, the BEV bird's eye view um, network. That's where we are looking at here. It is very, very detailed. Um, today we're in Shanghai trying out this system and Shanghai is not Xpeng's headquarters, which is Guangzhou, about a thousand mile um, southwest from where we are now. In some cities, uh, the Xpeng system can already operate without the help of high definition map. And that is a major plus because this car has now has this ability to reconstruct um, basically high definition map on the fly. It doesn't need high definition map anymore. Why do I say that is an advantage? Because high definition map is slow to update. You know, China's road network is getting updated all the time. And sometimes let's say there is a construction site popped up overnight and it's not available on the HD map. The HD map does not reflect that. And if you rely too much on the high definition map, then you could be in trouble and that is another step towards real autonomous driving, which Xpeng is projecting that to be around 2025. Now we're 2023. They're trying to make the system perform more and more like a human in more of the scenarios. So when they patch together every scenario, hopefully in 2025, we can say that this car in with its uh, navigate on pilot system engaged, is already indistinguishable compared to any human experienced drivers. At one point I need to emphasize is Xpeng and also Neo and a few others as well, uh, does a very good job on the kind of education of this system because this is as capable as it is, it is not a fully autonomized, fully autonomous driving system. So to be able to use this, you should pass a test in the Xpeng's app. It will make you watch a video explaining what it can do, what it can't do, in what scenarios you, you need to watch out. And you also need to pass a test. Um, and I think that is so important because systems like this, they are assisting you to drive the car. And you should know the limits of these systems. Like um, uh, currently this system on left-hand turns is still a bit um, sketchy. so. It's not like when you engage this system and you should just fall asleep, don't do that. But if you are um, interested and fascinated by the development in the very cutting edge of um, autonomous driving, then you should find this system, all of the strengths and weaknesses, very interesting. Like I just noticed another thing, you see the Tesla in front has put on indicators. The model in our bird's eye view also is flashing indicator light. It can detect details to that level. And I find this kind of development, you see this car now put on indicator lights. The system now also detects it on indicator lights. All of these nuances and details fascinates me. I find this all every gentle step for um, electric cars or for cars in general, um, to make it one step further, one step closer towards full autonomy fascinates me. And I hope you enjoy videos like this because it's, it records how car industry as a whole is progressing towards full autonomy. And it's days like this and you realize that dream is a little bit closer. It's not unachievable. 
and it's thanks to manufacturers like, like Xpun, Huawei and Neo are making these investments. These are very expensive developments to do and you need to maintain a huge team to uh, work on the algorithms, to build the software stack, to continuously improve them. So yeah, let's watch this space. I think China, with the possible exception of Tesla in the United States, is gonna be the fastest country to realize full autonomy and hopefully when that day comes in 2025 or 2026 we can look back today and say that well this is one of the very important steps so that is all from this episode of the telescope if you enjoyed this video keep watching keep subscribing more videos coming along very soon